Here's a story. A mother starved two children in the basement in 1997. Here's the one who survived. Mom, mom, Shawnee's dead. So she just broke the light in the basement and told him to go down there, take the trash bag, put it inside the trash bag, and drag it to the back of the basement and put it under the water heater and come back up here. I'm just dragging her body. I'm crying at the same time, I'm like, dang. Like, what was your relationship like with her? Do you remember? Take a minute. What's good? My name is Chris Stavis. This is Traveling Anonymous. Welcome back. Welcome back. Shout out to everybody that's been keeping the movement moving. If you want some of that Traveling Anonymous merch, please hit me up. Hit me in the DM if you know a story. Somebody that you just want to get their story out there and change some lives with us. Download that Traveling Anonymous on an Apple Podcast. Make sure that you are tuned in, sharing, liking, and just keeping us viral. We can't thank you guys enough without the listeners. Um, none of this is possible, so... We greatly appreciate it. I've been um, waiting for this story for a while and um, not physically in time span, but a story like this one. So um, you guys are in for a treat. And um, do remember that the stories that you're here do not necessarily reflect real life. They're here to entertain, educate, or just keep your little homie off the streets. It's only entertainment. Please don't get me indicted. My name is Chris Stavs. Let's get it. What's up, man? How you doing? Oh man, first of all, thank you for being here. And um, um, we just gonna jump right into it. Bring me to the day you had to cover your sister with um, that uh, trash bag. It was, I would say normal, but unnormal for us. You know what I'm saying? Probably a normal day for some, for others. Um, woke up more in time in the basement, third step. So I hear the basement door slam, woke us up. I'm like, oh, this food is an onion, a raw onion and a banana at the top of the stairs. At this time, Charnay's sleeping in my arm. Charnay's my sister. I run up the steps, get the onion, start eating it. We all down, Charnay, Charnay. She don't move. So I walk back down the steps. I give her a little kick. She just tumbled down the last two steps of the stairs. I'm like, and all I know is, went up the steps, like I turned to the hawk, like me being, what, probably six, seven at the time. No, no, no nutrition, nothing. I'm skinny. At the time, the deep freezer was holding the door. I break through the door, push the deep, the deep freezer out the way. Mom, mom, Shawnee's dead. She come down, um, tell me, at this time my, old, my two older sisters was leaving, so she just broke the light in the basement, like the top of the light, broke it, and told me to hide, the, hide go, go down there, take the trash bag, Put her, put her inside this trash bag and drag her to the back of the basement and put her under the water heater and come back up here. As a kid, I'm like, dang, like, what's, like, I don't know what to do, so I just did it. Mm. I'm just dragging her body. I'm crying at the same time. I'm like, dang, like, again, I don't know what I was thinking because, again, I don't know what was there. I don't know how to think when you put this drag a dead body and hide it under a water heater in the basement. And, yeah. Yo, t tell me about the moment you realized she was actually dead. You said she was on your arms, but when you heard the door open, you knew it was food. Right. Um, typically, I'm assuming you guys would like. It was like typically, like they were door open. We scurrying to the top of the steps, like animals. 
knowing that it's going to be we're waiting to see who's coming on the step next. So when she didn't run to the steps, I'm like, I mean, she's just tired. Maybe she, I'm saying, she just fell asleep or something. The whole time she was dead. Like when you when you bust that deep freezer open because your mother would trap you in the in the basement. When you bust that deep freezer open and you said she's dead, it's because you watched that her body fall from those. Down, down the steps. When I gave her a nudge, she tumbled or like you know, fall down, fell down the last three steps, like rolled. I'm like, and then I go down, you know, shaking and moving her. She not move. I'm calling her name and run upstairs and tell my mom. And you, you were crying because I don't even know if I was crying because, and when I tell people like. I don't know what hurt is. I don't, I don't know what love is. I don't know nothing. I don't know. All I know was I used to hear kids running in outside in the basement window, ice cream truck. I, I heard this sound. Dude, I'm like, damn, what is that? And I hear kids. I don't know what that is. I don't know if they're having fun, they're crying. So when that happened, I don't know what to do. Because I don't know. I don't, I, I was never experienced love or all I know was, I guess, hatred or ne neglect, I should say. Mm. So I didn't know if it was how to cry or if I was crying. Like, I, just, I don't know. I just know I was dragging a dead body. And she was dead. And she, she was dead in my arms. What was your relationship like with her? Do you remember? Um. Take a minute. So basically, like, we did everything together. Like, it was just me and her, so, like, you know, it was basically, we helped each other, like. Mm. Maybe I did. Looking back at it now, I knew what fun was because we used to, we made the basement the, the playpen. Like the night before, that's what we did. We cleaned up the basement, moved all the chicken bones, the bricks, rocks, and the dirt was where we played that. Mm. I'm saying we used, looking back on now, we used to have fun. Like, then, yeah. Um. That was your dog. That was your dog. Yeah. Um, when you, when you say you didn't know what fun was, you didn't you didn't have an interaction with other kids. This was. I read the transcripts. I read the news articles. I read what probably everybody had to say about this story. They said Charnay would drink water out of the toilet. Both of us. I'm a, I remember that day like it was yesterday. I remember it was time where my mom was would be in the room doing what she doing, and we'd sneak out the room to go drink out the toilet, not knowing what's in the toilet though. We don't know what's in the toilet, mind you. We don't know. It's dark, and we're sneaking because we know we can't be out here. Like we, mom told us, stay in that room. Don't come back out. If you come back out, I'm whooping your ass. And you was just thirsty. Thirsty. You told me you felt guilt for drinking the water um, in the basement. That maybe Charnay uh, died from dehydration. Maybe. I just know that is looking back on that, I can't say I blame me. I can just say that maybe she could have had more if we were getting more food, it could have been maybe a little bit better. It could have been 
I don't think it was on me. I don't think me not giving her some water is my fault. Where'd you get the water from? Could have been leaking. It was just in probably a leak from the basement. A leak? And that's where we're drinking from. I, I can't even fathom this level of torture. Yeah. It's a million dollar question. Why would your mother, why was she doing this? Why would she do this to her kids? From my understanding, my recognition, from what I was told, it was because I was a happy, happy baby running around, you know what I'm saying, smiling. I'm saying so me being happy running around and then having a a baby that's three, four, that's crying, that needs a mother's attention, you can't concentrate on getting high or doing what you need to do. So in the, in order for that to happen, I'm gonna lock it all away. So I can concentrate on getting high and running the streets and do what I need to do. They said that your mother would use the checks that she would get from the government to get high and she also would prostitute. Did you see men coming in and out of the house growing up? Um, the question is, did they not even know that she had kids? Mm. That should be the question because we, I, me personally, I only heard men. I never seen nobody, I heard of them. Heard men in, in, in out the room. I remember sleeping on the bed with my mom while a man is in the bed while they doing what they doing. Having sex. Right. And he's laying there. Laying there. Listen, they listen to, to, yeah, to the oldies, what we call it now. Back then, that was their music. <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Where does this thing come from with... You would go in the basement. How how much time would y'all spend in the basement? We probably spend like months, from weeks to months, from days to weeks to months at a time. If if not in the basement, then in the back room, tied up. Tied up, hog tied. Tied what? Um, what's that brown twine? Twine, you know mm -hmm. the brown thin rope that mm -hmm. you use to that rope. I got scars on my arms and all that. How long would you be stay tied up? Probably for days. Like I remember the time when we broke out of it. I got out of being tied up. I'm untied Chardonnay. And then we run around the house. But we eating everything that we can eat. Hot sauce, ketchup, mayonnaise, bread, frozen butter, sugar, whatever. Then the kicker is then we gotta run now, I gotta go back and tie her up, and then I got to tie myself up. Oh my God. And that didn't go well. What do you mean? Well, you know, if you, let's say you leave something the way you left it, it's supposed to be the, the way yeah. it is when you come back to it. Right. And that wasn't the case. And at least, at least she was tied up, but. You wasn't. I, so describe the beatings. When, like, how would your mother uh, beat you? Would she hold back a little bit, or was it just a... Full force, whatever, arm reach, brush, extension cord, whatever was an arm reach. Did you love your mother growing up? Again, I didn't know what love was, wow. or even to be around her to know what a... I probably had one instant when... It was a, a good day. Christmas, snow outside, come down. Everybody got gifts. I remember I had a bite and riding in the snow. Mm. And then it's like a light switch. What do you mean, light switch? I can't tell you no more. Wow. About no about no sunny. When I say sunny, like, you know you see a commercial like like a all these truck commercial. And they, and they open the blinds up and it's sunny, but it's snowing outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was that kind of day. After that, it's like dark. How would you pass time in that basement for months? Talking.
talking, playing. That's it. You would eat Prime. the you you would eat the um pink chips off the wall. Oh yeah, that was that was my snack. <laughs> I, I remember that like it was yesterday. Like I would sit, I would go to third third from the top step. I sit right there. I probably finish half of a wall. The court document said it was lead in the paint. Well, I remember. Listen, I remember going to a doctor after all, after they came out the basement and all that. The doctor told me for another month, maybe another, another month or two months, we'd have been dead. Mm. That's how now nourished I was. And okay. So the other kids in the house, it seemed like you and Sharnay got it the worst. All right. Because they were other kids. They were, your mother had eight kids. Mm-hmm. At the time when you were growing up from uh, until the age six, seven, who else was in the house with you? Um, as, as far as I can remember, was Khadija, Gwen, Shadira, and Larisha. That's it. And what was their treatment like? Probably as, as worse, maybe. Do you feel like a lot of these these memories um, you've suppressed so that? But a lot of, just like I told my sisters, a lot of don't have recognition of what happened to them. Again, I'm locked in the basement or I'm tied up. So I probably got like one instant of us all being around. And that's mm -hmm. when Khadija burn her leg, trying to get warm from the stove, we all cuddled from the stove, she got her legs up, fall asleep, leg fall, boom, burn her whole leg up. They did skin, what is it, skin grab? Skin, skin grab. Skin grab from different parts of her body and all that. Like, that's the only time I can remember. And then the time when my sister died, they went to, they went somewhere, and my mom told them, but not tell them people that this happened. I remember that statement, clear as day. How did your mother get caught? Mother get caught. I want to say, older sister Denisha comes in the house. Don't quote me. Maybe I might have got it wrong. But as far as I know, came from she coming in the house and it smelled like a dead body. Like we was living in the house. I remember sleeping with my mom a couple of times, and she used to tell me like, "If I ever get caught, don't say nothing." Like. I will always love you like this. Mm. Did life get better for you? This might seem like an odd question, but did life get better for you after Shawnee passed? Was your mother nicer to you? Did she show more compassion? Did she take better well, care of you? I think after she died, it was more compassion. I remember the first time eating fried chicken. She fried fried chicken on the same day that Shawnee died. She, she put me in the tub, she had, she had to wash me up three to five times because it had so much dirt on me. And I left a permanent ring around it. You know how you get in the tub? Mm -hmm. I left a permanent ring. Like, not no light ring, a dark ring. Like, That's how filthy. Filthy. What was your mother's demeanor like that day when she's frying the chicken? Is she crying? Is she like... Upset, if you could remember, like what, what's like her sort of like her energy like? Looking back at it now, a normal person, normal, like nothing happened. It was fine, chicken. How would you use how would you use the bathroom when you was tied up? How would you use the bathroom in the basement? How would you number one, number two? Like how would you how would you go? I don't remember. I'm gonna share a bucket in a room, then in the basement. It was a squat. Uh, number two, yeah, you, you squatting behind the, the steps and going to the bathroom. 
So it smelled down there. All right. What was a normal day for you? Like, back then, were you going to school? I remember going to school here and there. I remember going to school because I remember one day I went, I stole the coin. I don't know if people remember, but like back in the day, you can, I think you used to put change inside the thing for like candy or something for the end of the week or something, or for a trip, whatever it was. I took, I put, I put my two cents in, I took half the jar. I was walking down the street with chains, ling ling. By the time I got home, my mom was outside with a belt. Walked me from the top of the block to the crib inside the house. Nobody is asking questions. I mean, I know you're just so young. You're so young. As far as I know, nobody's asking me anything. All right. Your mother gets caught. Your sister says it smells like a dead body's in here. Cops come? Cops come. Take your mother away. You go see the doctor. The prognosis of your condition. What are they saying is wrong with you? I know he said if you had another month after Shawnee had passed that you probably had another month. But what are, what are the things... Did they find wrong? Um, I don't even, I can't even remember. I, just, I, I remember the dumb words, like, and he's saying it's a miracle, and basically, you gotta eat. So many words, you know, no doctor, big words, but mm -hmm. basically, I need to eat, gain some food. Was the onion tasty to you, or was it just like, I'm so hungry, it doesn't matter what it is? Back then? Back then. It's just food. Just food. But now that I eat certain foods, I can't eat butter, like raw butter. I can't eat raw mayonnaise. I can't eat a plain piece, a piece of bread. Like, just give me a slice, I can't eat it. Like, I gotta eat it with some chicken or dip it in the gravy. I can't just eat a raw piece of sliced bread. I can't just eat straight jelly or just lick straight hot sauce. Like it's just, cause I, I used to eat it so much that, or not even eat it, steal it. That's, and yeah, it just, I can't eat that, right, like today. No, I get it, I get it. Your mother goes to jail, do you testify? Yeah. Did you understand what it meant to take the stand against your mother? Or did you just feel like you had to do what you had to do? I mean, as a kid, you know, you just they point, you point, you go. Listen, you gotta do this. This is for. I remember being on there and this. Like, I'm seeing my mom. Like, I'm looking down. I know she over this side. I'm like, she crying, but like, you can see her saying something like, "Don't do it." Like, wow. I'm saying, "Don't do it." Don't say nothing. Like, yeah. That was a crazy week. And, and what did you feel at that moment? Did you feel like, all right, I can't say nothing? Or did you did you feel like, honestly, I, I'm putting this lady away? This wasn't even neither one. It was just, I was told to do it. It was help. It was to help the family and help bring justice for Charnay. Wow. wow, wow. So. OK. So what kind of things did you have to say on the stand? Basically, what happened? How was I being treated? Um, how was she? I can't really remember the questions because I know it was I was crying most of the time. Mm. Did you did you did you miss your mother? Did you when they had taken her away? You had to go to the doctor. I'm sh you go to like foster care at this time. Right. Um, did you miss her? Did you feel sad and no feelings? Was I probably was sad, but to say that I miss her, that's like how we didn't really have a connection for me to miss. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's not like missing my, like, I'm missing my son now. Like, he's not here. I miss him. We got a connection. Mm -hmm. 
No, it's not. I can't kind of say I miss my mom. Like, I just know I didn't play those mama jokes. I just know that I felt like they was talking about me, like directly about me. Like, your mama's on crack. What? What you mean? Your mama, what? Yeah, I'm just in this. It was up. I'm fighting, biting, suspended, all that. Wow. Um, did you have that same sort of reservations for Sharnae? Did you did you miss her? Did you? Yeah. You, you, I used to cry every day. I used to cry every day. Every yeah, every day for for years. Wow. Like, I don't know where just cry. I mean, it's you with somebody and y'all went y'all went through something to now like damn, I can't even talk to her no more. I can't even let her know how I'm, how we doing now. Like you know what I'm saying so, so it was like dang, like yeah. What was your mother's sentence? Twenty eight to fifty six. Years. Yes. And how much of that does she have to complete? Did you do you know now? Um, I can't even tell you. I've never even heard a sentence like that before. Yeah, I mean, I I probably heard that like federal time or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, but yeah, I never heard it. Um, yeah. Five baby fathers, eight children. She testified that she was on crack, methamphetamine, vodka, 40 ounces. She said sometimes she was high for three to four days straight. Mm. She forgot y'all was even in the basement. Mm -hmm. I read that your sister says probably the only time that she felt that your mother was nice was when she was high or inebriated or doped up, probably too young for you to understand at the time, you know. I mean, I do remember times when she was cool. She let us, we used to watch, um, dang, what's that show? That everybody mom used to watch. Um, they used to call it the stories. You know, some of the stories. Mm -hmm. She used to let us watch that. But again, other than that, I don't remember her being nice. Like, yeah. I've always seen the dark side. Your mother fought for you guys um, first when uh, y'all were born. Uh, they said that she went and convinced the hospital and everyone, the police or the social workers, that she was a fit mother. So that she could get her kids, she right. she she got five of her kids. Do you think that she was fighting to be a mother, or do you think that she was fighting for the, the checks? Most that definitely was... the checks. So nothing about her you feel like was a motherly instinct. Was a I need my kids. I, I just you know. I mean, it probably was the urge of I miss my kids. I want them, but the overall of it is. No, I need I need that money. They probably told her you can get this amount for each kid, and it was just I'm about to go play the sad song and get them. I need that money. Do you hate your mother now? No, as of right now, no. Um, I had to learn. I learned to forgive her. Mm. It was 2014. I was doing a bid, and I was able to have the warden of the county jail I was at communicate with the jail she was at and I was able to write her. Because at that time I was in the streets doing what I was doing. So I was able to understand what these drugs was doing and how I would be able to control somebody with the drugs that they needed. So like all right, I kinda understand. You know what I'm saying? Not if not all of it is on the drugs, but I can understand how it can affect you. So I learned to forgive her. After court, you get um, you get a, you you go into foster care. Um, now you're getting some type of normalcy. You're getting food. 
Or you're getting water, you're getting something to drink. Do you feel the instant shift in your life at that time when you're going to foster care? I still felt like even going to foster care, I still was being shunned out. I was some foster care that I was being locked in. I think I mean, I was in a foster care they had they was like rich or like and they used to keep me locked in a room. I never went out. They used to bring me the food to me, water to me. I never seen outside of like I remember it being a white hallway with all these gold trim pictures. Gold railing, white steps. I'm like, damn. But that's all I remember. Going in and being taken away. And how long before you actually get adopted did you um, spend time in foster care? Um, I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember the time. I know it was probably like a couple, maybe like two or three homes. Oh, wow. Maybe, yeah. It's a lot of moving around. Um, you and your sister get adopted with three other kids? Me and my two sisters. Two of you? Yeah. And what's this new home like? What's these new parents like? Um, a breath of fresh air. Mm. Yeah, it was um it was cool. It was fun. Like everything was fun, like sports, big backyard. <laughs> yeah. That warms my heart, man. It's like you hear so much of this torture and just damning evidence that I was actually going through um, to hear that there was a breakthrough somewhere, somewhere in your, like you, was a, like you survived that, like you came out of that. You could have been very, very different. A month later. One month later, could have been over and you survived that, it's just, there's something about you. There's gonna be something about your story. There's something about what you went through that I feel like is gonna transcend even this podcast, even how we sitting here right now. I really do believe that. Does your relationship with your sisters in this new home does it does it build? Are you able to? Are you you know talk to me about how that relationship was? Because at at the end of the day, that is that is your family. And they do have some sense of what you went through. They didn't go through what you went through, but they do have a sense of what you went through. I remember reading Gwen. She still calls your mother by her first name. You know, she has, she says she didn't hate it. She says she doesn't hate anyone, but if it was something close to, close to hate, then that's what she would have to your mother. I think that's, maybe all of my sisters feel like that. Um. You I don't, I'm half and half. Okay. It's still my biological mother, mm -hmm. so who knows, all right, that's still, but then I guess going, being in the streets, mm -hmm. and just, I guess some understanding what these drugs can do, kind of get to understand, of, all right. But what I call her mom, no. I call her by her first name, mm -hmm. like everybody else were, but, but in this new home, mm -hmm. It was easy because as far as the other three kids, they were going through something similar. So we all kind of was able to mm. get through what we went through together. Like mm. it wasn't, they weren't too far off. So it was like, all right, bet. Like now I got a brother and then they got a sister mm. and our bond got closer, which made their bond closer with each other. And then, then we all got a good bond. Things are looking up, things things are going well. And then you drop out of school in the 10th grade. I think my I was, so being adopted was a good thing, you know what I'm saying? But I think they kind of shielded us from a lot to make us want to go explore. Like, it's times where you know, high school, people about to go out, let's just, just to a school dance. We ain't got to say to the 
to the block or to someone to a school dance, we not going. Or, you know, because my dad was the principal at the time too. And in, in Philadelphia, so I was in the county. So it was it was just like me trying to get to learn to I'm going to my dad's school. When we get, we don't got school, I'm going to my dad to his school. I see how it is over there. People in the streets, the girls. I'm like, dang, I'm trying, I'm trying to get out of here. Like my school, mm-hmm. I can't do that. Like yeah. so I think that was and then being with friends that's able to go out, it was like, no, nah, I need to go see what's up, what's out there, like what's going on out there. And yeah. Were were you good in school? Or class calm. Class calm. You know what I mean? Always oh, messing with the chicks. Um, I was an okay, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> probably won't believe it, but I felt gym. People don't, how you, my, my dad, like, how you feel gym? It's gym. Mm-hmm. I felt it. I'm saying because, again, people I'm around, the influence, I can see, like, damn, I ain't got, I'm trying, I'm trying to be like that, like, so yeah, I dropped out. In the midst of dropping out, I became homeless. They kick you out the house. Kicked me out, slash ran out, right. Hmm. Where are you sleeping at in the streets? How old are you, 16? Yeah, 15, 16. 15, 16? Yeah. Where are you sleeping at? How are you? I'm sleeping in abandoned apartments. Um, that's really it, then I had then I became cool with three friends, three guys. Like they became, they all let me sleep. They all let me stay with them. And their mom was single parents, all three of them. Wow. So it was just the mom and the son. I'm kicked out of school. Y'all let me stay at your house. When y'all in school, it just made that was just like that made us all of us cool. Like when it's tight, like. If not with them, I mean, I'm probably, my man probably got a car at the time. All the band apartments is locked up. I'm sleeping in the back of the car, outside, on the bench. But you had a home. You had a home. That you probably scratched and clawed your spirit fought to survive so that you could see a way out. You have people that are showing you love, compassion, and all you could do was run away from them. Yeah. Do you think there's a connection between how you grew up to that sort of decision making? Looking back on now, I feel like, yeah. I feel like from that to going to jail was just, yeah, that, that's, 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 that's in my blood, I think it was meant for me. It was meant for me to go to jail. It was meant for me to probably be in the streets. I'm probably not meant to be in the streets, but to go to jail or probably sniff around and get in the streets, I think it was meant to be. Or it was, was going to happen. How'd you get locked up? What's time? Hmm. Okay, so there was an instance where you you actually beat beat the charge. So, um, talk to us a little bit about that. They they said that you uh, had did something you didn't do. Long story short, people that know take Xanax. You don't remember nothing, but this I remember. I remember the day like it was yesterday. So you got caught. I mean, so you got caught up taking drugs. Basically. So what happened was, long story short, I wanted to go make a sale. I see an undercover cop. People that we used to sell, you know, they used to put the drugs in their mouth in case somebody could search. Mm-hmm. But when long story short, they, I, something happened to her, they didn't, they pulled off. I'm like, now they gonna spin. Happened and as soon as I turn back around and go in the corner, I'm gonna go around the corner onto the house, they pulled me, freeze. Who? Oh. Hold up, you're under arrest, locked this up. One cop said, yeah, y'all, y'all locked up for, y'all getting under, y'all under arrest for a murder. I'm like, murder? I said, yeah, no, you ain't, you got the wrong one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was right this spot all day. 
ain't nobody die around here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? It's a true story. That's what I'm telling you. Like, you got the wrong one. He started laughing at me. He said, I'm going to find out. Come back. Someone know it was an armed robbery. Got something about the car. Something about the car. I got a hood on this time. With, like little braids. The car, must a cop car drive past. I see the suspects that supposedly got robbed by us drive past in the back, pointing, like, yeah, that's them. I'm like, how they know it was me? They can't even see my face. I barely saw them. I know they didn't see my face. <laughs> Get locked up. My mom and dad, that I haven't seen in maybe a year or two, mm-hmm. coming to the rescue. Wow. To pay my bail. The PD I had turned to my actual lawyer, wow. fought the case. We beat it. That year it was Christmas fell on a Wednesday. We, no, on a Saturday. On a Saturday, we beat it. On I beat the case on a Wednesday. So the people that you turned your back on, they never turned their back on you? Correct. Does this mend the relationship between y'all? Do you come back home? Do you... At that moment, or well, at that time, I did come back home. Right back to the streets. And what are you doing in the streets? You selling drugs? At this time, I'm burglarizing homes. Breaking and entering? Right. What kinds of things are you leaving with? Whatever is, is able to leave out that front door. So you're taking like TVs or jewelry and money? Whatever's fitting through that door. And how long are you doing that for? Um, it took a lock up. Okay. And that was probably for like maybe a couple months. Maybe a couple, probably not even really a year. Maybe a year. Are maybe. You bugging people, robbing people? No, not necessarily. I still had my morals. I still had the I, I respect. We were making sure the old lady's cool. We, mm-hmm. we ain't gonna really hit nobody that's doing, we ain't not doing that. We wasn't on that. So you get a close call while you're robbing, ro- robbing a home and someone calls the cops? No. So what happened was somebody leaving the house. As soon as they leave, we go in their house. I got my fingerprints on the window. When they come and do the, you know, do the evidence and all that, they find my fingerprints on the, on the, on the window. Wow. They didn't know it was me because I wasn't in their system, mm. which is out the county. It wasn't in the system. So I'm like, all right. The only reason why they knew who was me because the cop at the high school I went to knew, knew of my family because of my, uh, another sibling. And then once my last name came back, I said, who is it again? And they, I get a phone call from my sister. Yo, they're here looking for you. Like, soon I hang up. I'm in a whole different area, and they, they get locked up. What was your first time in jail like? How long did you spend? My first time in jail was for the armed robbery. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a it was a, a wake up call, cause I'm in probably one of the worst county jails in Philadelphia, on the on the worst block in Philadelphia. I'm talking about um so. Real quick about that experience, that was it was a crazy experience, but my story came back out when I was locked up because my mom had got baptized and it came out in the paper. And people on the block was reading the paper and I told them, yo, that's my mom, that's my story. And it was just like, every, I'm, I'm gonna say 75% of jail knew of the story. Did this give you some kind of notoriety while in the prison? Yeah, it did. I remember just one old head, big old head, like, I feel like he can lift the jail, but like everybody was, was cool with him. And he just, it's my bro, like, I remember your story, a young boy, like, he said, if I'm not, I probably know your mom too, like, and like you said, just everybody knew the CEOs, I mean, it didn't make it no better, but like I said, it was just a, probably, probably for that one meal, I think it came out like, in between breakfast and lunch, mm-hmm. and when lunch came, they gave me actual cookies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, other than that, yeah. That's all I'm saying. What was your worst time in prison? Um, probably when I had to get to a little, little scuffle, you know what I'm saying. But what, what made that so uh, 
But no, well, I think my first time was my first time just going to jail in general was my probably my, my worst time because I didn't know what jail was. Yeah. I didn't know what what to expect. I didn't know how to go. I didn't know. I never been in this environment where so many different type of characters or you know mm -hmm. people. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying so. But as I went to I probably, the only time I got into a scuffle was one time in jail. Other than that, jail was, I'm a funny guy, I'm bidding off everybody. It's cool, like, not cool to be in jail, but I'm making it the best of what it was. So you, you come out after the year and find yourself in trouble again? Um, for... I don't know, what, what, what else did you... I did a year, oh, I, I had did a year for drugs and and a gun charge when I was out of town. You said you reached out to your mother. At what point did you? Um, that was that was during the year. Mm -hmm. That was during the year I was I did. Um, I reached out to her. And then I got a response back. Like to her had that warden of my jail. I'm in the office and he called the jail and like telling me, listen, man, was coming from this name. Ooh, ooh. I know that that's what I'm telling. How'd that make you feel? Looking back on it, because at that time, I'm like, man, it is what it is. Like, I did my part, like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But looking back, I was like, dang, I can't get a, res I can't get a response, like. Would you, could you share some of the stuff that you said to your mom? Basically just telling like, at that time where everybody's going through it in life, like how, I think my sister just had her daughter, mm -hmm. um, one of them was in college. Mm -hmm. So everybody was just on the right path at that time. So that's that's basically what I was telling her. Like, you know, I'm in jail for doing the X, Y, and Z, woo woo. I forgive you. Mm. Um, I'm saying. When did you realize you actually forgave her? I actually had, had to go from the jail I was at out of town to the county. And on the way back, I was on, rec on the way back, it was a female that was going to one of the two jails out in Philadelphia where the females are, they go upstate where they go. And that was the first stop we went to. So she's telling me, she's like, I'm telling her, my mom was in the jail you were at. She's like, yeah. I told her, I told her my mom's name, instantly crying. I'm telling her, it's a five hour ride, instantly crying. The whole ride she's crying, telling me everything about my mom, like everything, telling her she was sorry, how she felt, like, it was just, we both back there crying. I feel like it was only us two on the van. And, and, and I couldn't even see her. I couldn't even tell you how she looked. She was cute, ugly, old, young. I couldn't even tell you how she looked because they put us in there. People that know, we on RIT going from, it's, a, it's like a metal plate in between you and the females. You might see them coming in, like get actual on the van, but you're not, you know, so you know, I probably was trying to talk to her. Yo, yeah, we are. And then it went from me to probably try to talk to her to we then we boo hooing. Because she knew my mom. That is extraordinary. To where when she got off the van, the the cop who was driving thought this was this on tour. Cause she didn't know we, we handcuffed, so she really can't wipe her face like she want to or really so he like, what you do to her? What you say to her? And she's like, no, no. Like, yeah. I think she told me she loved me just off the strength of my, of her meeting me. Like, because of her knowing that my mom was telling her the story to, man, I actually, that's like somebody tell you a story about me and then you actually sit here talking to me. That's crazy. And I, I think that's how it went with her. Like, dang, I, I heard about you in jail, I got time. Like, this is years ago I heard about you. To me, actually now, not really seeing you, but seeing you and talking to you. And she told you that there was remorse from your mother? That your mother's sorry? So I took that and I put that in my own life. And I'm like, can I find a way to forgive her? Is there a way to forgive her? And if so, why? And I was able to do all that in the midst of my mind still 
worry about the streets when I get home. Like, even though I understand why you did that, I'm still trying to get back to the streets. Mm. When you're serving those people, you see your mother. And it's crazy because, quick story, I was, when I was homeless, me and my other sister, we ran to each other in the homeless shelter. Crazy story. We're sitting how we're sitting right now. And we had to sign a paper when we first signed in. And we got signed, it goes around the table. So I'm sitting there like, I know this girl. But how do I know her? Did I talk to her before? Like, dang, like, I'm, that's how I'm looking at her. Like, I'm, 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 it's like I'm talking to her with my eyes. Like, yeah, I know her, but I don't really know her. I don't know how. So I'm the last to sign it. So I'm like, I go to the first. She first, I'm last. I read it. We, I feel like it was a, a cue button. Like we both start crying instantly. Like why? Because we haven't seen each other, and this is the first time we've seen each other, and we had to see each other being homeless. But what was that cue that that? Because, you, because she must have been thinking the same thing. Oh, shit. Like, dang, I know, like, he looks familiar. Like, I know him. And maybe, like, I don't know what she was thinking. I don't know this is bad. Me being homeless, I'm all thinking about trying to get a girl and get some money. You feel me? So that I'm thinking, I'm like, dang, did I talk to her before? Like, I'm saying, because I ran, that's, that was my game. That was my game. So, and I think, like, once I seen her name and she realized that I seen her name, Mm. We both started crying. So, with that being said, she had a job around the corner from the um, homeless shelter. She was like, you got to stop doing that. You got to stop selling drugs. You got to stop because, like, that's how mommy got in. Well, that time she didn't say mommy, but that's how Charlene got into, you know what I mean? That's how she, I forgot how she put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like. Looking back at it, I'm like, damn, she right. At that time, I'm like, man, I, don't, I, I need some money. You need some money too, right? You hungry, right? I'll be back. Cause I'm going to go, I'm going to make this move and get some food. You feel me? So it was like, and then looking back, I'm like, damn, like, I'm serving my biological mom. I sit and I think about how you could be homeless. I'm like, how is that? Like, and it's just like, I don't want to say it's nothing for you, but it was almost like it was nothing for you. And then I think about those harsh conditions, and I want to say the basement was rougher than being homeless. Right. People always say, like, in the normal life, the bottom is homeless or in jail. I've been all three. I've been in the basement, homeless, jail. Made it through all without a scar. Well, not the basement part, but the other, the other two, homeless and being in jail, came out without a scar. You come out, you start running it up, down in Florida, Miami. You starting to see some real paper now. What was that experience like? To everybody, at the same time, homeless. Doing all this, I'm, I'm still homeless. If you take all that away from me, getting money, Girls, chains, cars, take all that away from me. I'm homeless. At night, I'm not going home to my own crib with all this money. And I'm going home to my man, rest in peace to him. I'm going home with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm probably got to go buy some drawers real quick in the morning time or something. Like, How much money are you seeing at this time? Not, I, not, I didn't. Tell you about not at one time, but in six months I seen a hundred grand. I was bringing home twenty two to twenty five grand every two weeks. What are you doing with this money? Help people out. Flash everything that they tell you don't do as in the streets. I wasn't the I wasn't the main one, but yeah, that's what he was doing. Wow. I can't help but to 
think about this underlying parallel between um, that homelessness always just being a prevalent factor in your life. Homeless. Even when you got all the money in the world, you still don't prioritize having a home. And I know people think like, dang, why you never go home? Another reason why I never went home is because once I got into the streets, I wasn't about to bring home streets to home. Mm-hmm. Meaning, when I want to leave the house, I, I got to leave the house. I got to make this move. I know I couldn't do that if I went home. I know that if I did something in the streets and I went home, you know, the streets is different. You got to think, somebody can follow me. These are not the folks that's into the streets. So I can't let that happen. Plus, my siblings still live there. And, you know, I'm older, so I can't have that yeah. around them. Yeah. Then, long behold, my brother falls into the footsteps. And that happens when I'm in jail. Doing the four years? No, probably before that, probably, I think it happened more like, more so during the year, maybe like between that time and before. Because I was doing my own movie and he was just throwing his. So during your longest stint in prison, that four years when you had to sit down, what was that for? Um, so that was for a case that I was doing. I, so the year I did, I was on a detainer because I was on parole and I violated. So it's so much behind that. But anyway, I went on a run from the last time being locked up from because I'm homeless. So I ain't about to go keep reporting y'all. Like, I have nowhere to go. Y'all gonna lock me back up. So I'm going to run. From there going to run, made me to start getting money. Got locked up for that year. That year, I had a detainer on me. I couldn't bail out. So once my detainer lifted up, I did the year for my violation, I was able to come home. But I'm still fighting the case that I got locked up for. It's just the drugs and the, and the guns. I come home, home for five months. I get the same thing, guns and drugs. So now I'm fighting both cases in jail. I lose. I take the deal. Only why they didn't give me more time because I, was, I stood up and I gave them a speech. I told them that during this time, I'm going to get my high school diploma and I'm going to change my life around. And I apologize for the crimes I committed by being out here in the judge said nobody ever did that in my courtroom, ever. My whole time being a judge. You just, what made you do it? I don't know, I feel like, I know it's about to go away for a long time. So I'm like, man, something, something might change, something might not. And I'm trying to get home. Let's see what this do. <laughs> what I'm saying, did, did, but did I you think. Know your story? But I think also I feel like I had to get something. High school diploma had to get done because as I'm getting money and I'm doing, you know, what's that? Um, mingling with other people, I'm seeing that All right, high school diploma won't be so bad if I get it. Exactly. It don't sound cool. Like not not have my high school diploma. Right. You know what I'm saying so. Did the judge know your story? No. Wow. Okay. Lo and behold, that speech comes to pass. You do what you say you're going to do, clean your life up. Mm -hmm. At what point did your life shift? At what point did you know you ain't going back to the streets? It's time to walk the street and narrow. Um, I think when it was, when I seen it was cool to do that, Mm -hmm. because I think I was, hanging around the wrong people. Mm-hmm. So when I did this four years, I gathered myself around some cool people that I still know to this day, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So me being around them, no, bro, I ain't, I can't be locked up. I can't get money, girls. I can't lead a crib like I want to. I can't do what I want. And I got to learn that it's me over, any, it's me over anybody, me first. Meaning, I don't care what you're doing. If I, if I feel like I'm going to be in, I might get locked up or something bad might happen, I'm cool. 
I, I chill, bro. I'm good. And that's when I knew when I, that's when I knew, all right, when I go home, it's up. I ain't, I ain't going to jail no more. Then I got a parole hit. That's what hurt me, my parole hit. That's what made me really, really like, oh, yeah, they got, I'm, I'm making it next time. I'll be home next time. What do you mean parole hit? So when you're up, when you're upstate, first of all, this is what happened. I'm, I got to rewind it back. To get lead up to this point. I was on boot camp. Boot camp is a six month program. Almost finished it. I didn't really finish it. Boom. Long story short, boot camp, I didn't finish it. I still had that you can't talk to me in kind of way type mentality. Kick, they kicked me out. Boom. Go back to the regular job, do my regular time. Now, in boot camp, I could have went straight home without seeing the parole board. Now that I got to say parole board, I got to have a job recommendation. I'm not getting no write-ups, not getting no trouble. Mm -hmm. First time, I made it all the way. To, I got my level lock, lock, lock. I got my level dropped to basically level two, meaning I'm, I can go outside the jails, all that. I had caught a hernia and I had surgery. Mm. We, I, got, I got into it with a CO. CO backdoored me a little bit. I got to write-up. So when I went to go see the parole board, it gave me a nine month hit. It made me sit down for nine more months. On top of the four? No, or it that's was, what made it equal for That's what made it four. Wow. And then I seen them, but that made me go harder. It made me do programs, it made me really stay out the way. And yeah, but my next parole, I was home. Do you think Jill saved your life? Um, my life. Uh, maybe in some way, I just can't think maybe how, but maybe in some way it probably did because the people I was around wasn't really the ones that was really into the streets that was getting killed. We were always really trying to get money. So at that time, nobody around me was, I knew of death like that for a for like, so maybe, maybe so. Maybe because I could have got robbed or... I mean, you told me that the guy that you was in Florida with is no longer here. Yeah, my best friend. You know? You making that conscious decision in jail that you probably wouldn't have made on the streets. Well, I made that decision in jail, but I kept, I stood on that. Yes, you did. On the streets. Yes, you did. Meaning, and, that's, and I let them to death. Like, that was like, that we day and night, yin and yang. Like, you can't miss us. Like, mm -hmm. it was, no, not seeing him was not going to see me. So, it was like, bro, like, I can't, first of all, I'm on parole, so I can't be moving around like how you want me to move around, bro. I'm not going to make a job for nobody. You my man, I love you to death, but, but it was also me trying to get to my man, like, bro. That's not, jail's not what it is, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, and you got kids. Like, at that time, I didn't have any kids. Mm -hmm. So I was more like, bro, you got kids, bro. You gotta, mm -hmm. it's not, you know, GTA. Where you never been locked up. He did, like, like a little month. But it wasn't, yeah. It wasn't like, I feel like, and my, and my message to my homies was like, well, I'm, I'm not going home. I'm going to let them know, like, bro, that's not what you want, bro. Mm -hmm. And that was my thing. I was pushing to, you know, you're grown, you're going to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But if I love you, I'm going to tell you what's best, no matter what. Mm -hmm. No matter if you don't like me or not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we kind of fell out because he felt like I wasn't on the same page as he was or I was bitching and all that. How long between that falling out did he die? It was always love, but it was also uh, we people around knew that. People that I, people that we both knew yeah. that I was even I wasn't around yeah. at that present time after he died, like, yeah, bro, like, dang, like, it's crazy because he would tell me y'all wasn't as cool mm -hmm. because you were scared to do X, Y, and Z. But they got to understand that mm -hmm. now, why? Because, bro, I was on parole. I couldn't move around. Then uh, jail wasn't the place I wanted to be, and I was how trying long, to get to you. How long were y'all at odds before he passed? Um, maybe a couple months. And how did he die? Um, out of town, I shot in his head. How did you feel when you got the news? 
Guck mal. Guck mal. I was just telling, I was just telling my girl that like, the way he felt when my man, when, when our friend Justin died, that's how I felt with him. Mm. We never got the that 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 closure, like, like bro, like, I, he never got to really understand why I was on what I was on. And if he was here now to see, he would, he'd be happy. Get your own place, become a father, in a relationship, got a job, doing the right thing. God bless you, brother. Came a long way. Mm -hmm. But here we are. Um, talk to the people that was on your path for one second. People that thought like you did and maybe some advice you would give them. Just keep pushing. Like, don't never let nobody tell you you can't do anything. Like, I thought I'd be in jail. I, I Listen, before I had my son, I always thought I'd never be allowed to even have any kids. Like, I thought I'd never be allowed to even have my own spot, to even have a family, to even have a job, but just keep pushing. What we'll haunts you to this day? We probably never make it, never get to tell them something I love her. Something you tell your younger self. I started laughing because my son is like, <laughs> my son is like my younger self. I'm, I'm able to, what I, what nobody never told me, I'm able to tell him, which is you're gonna be great. Mm. If by some miracle this interview finds its way to your mother, what's something that you would want to tell her? Think about that. I never thought about what I would say to her. I never really thought about like that. What I would say to my mom. I don't know, bro. That's a that's a that's, a, that's one of the questions I never asked myself and answered it. I always say like if I was a catcher on the street walking past, hey, what's up, like. I wouldn't be the person like, F you, fuck you. You did, you, you did me wrong. I think that that's a question where it's a spontaneous guy be on the, I gotta catch you. I gotta catch you in person. Like, I can't really like, yo, mom, listen, this is woo woo. I don't got that. I, I, I gotta catch you on the, oh, that's my, yo, what's up? How you been? Oh, you home? Oh, listen, this is, and then keep pushing. Here's my number, keep, keep pushing. This is Striving Anonymous, my name is Chris Stiles. Let's get it. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>